we were hoping and you to have you back to so this our second time looking at an exciting proposal for the rebuilding of Lahaina. So this is Think Tech Hawaii's human humane architecture, the 307th episode, and um, uh, you are the accumulated viewer which you see down there. Us is you, the Soto Brown, in your Ossipov designed diamond head home, and you are otherwise the Bishop Museum historian. Hi, De Soto. Good day to everyone. Myself, Martin Despang, and we have the other Martin, Anselini Garcia Rice, with us uh, here back in Honolulu. Hi, Martin. Hello. Great. So last time we were throwing out an appetizer of your great proposal for what one could and should do, as we think, uh, in Lahaina. And it's the process and the product of only a few weeks into the semester where you are with us in your um, in your DR uh, degree coming up, Martin. So, um, and um, maybe this time while the slides are walking through again, um, DeSoto, you made a comment about viewership. You want to, we should open this up to everyone, to yeah. you, our, our viewers. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to point out that many times on Human Humane Architecture, we do multi-part shows, or we do shows that have one, two, or three, or more sequences in the entire story. So there are previous shows. We've done one previous show on this particular subject. So if this is something you're interested in, and the reconstruction of Lahaina and the various proposals and the particular proposals we're going to be talking about, then I urge you to, we all urge you to look for the previous shows and keep in mind that there will be shows after this one too, for you to check out. So it isn't just one isolated show. Be, in, be aware that there are other ones that you'll want to look for if you want to pursue this subject and be informed about it, which I think a lot of people do because the Lahaina story is still very relevant, is, is going to be ongoing for a number of years into the future. So as the discussion continues as to how Lahaina can and should be rebuilt, this is something to keep in mind. There are a lot of different proposals, and this is one that has particularly unique aspects to it that um, it's, it's good to be informed about. So we urge you to look for the other shows we're going to be doing on this, as well as the one we've already previously done. And we say this because if we look at the viewers uh, that you were in the past, rightly so, your very first one, uh, DeSoto, when you went there and looked for us and shared that, that had 2,000 viewers, then you did a second half of that that only had 300, and, and last week we had only 50. And we're not worried about, uh, thanks to UJ, um, we don't have to worry about how many watch us as far as the existence. but. It is kind of sad because there's a certain sensationalist aspect to what we are watching these days. When things are really sad uh, and mad, we watch them. And then once there are things who could improve that sadness, there's actually less attention and it should actually be the reverse. So keep uh, listening to us uh, brainstorming here. The responses we had, Martin, to your pro proposal were good, and I would summarize them by saying, well, this is fantastic, uh, versus the other end of that was when people were saying, well, this is just fantasy. <laughs> so it's somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in between, and once we have shown everything here, once this has been running through, we go back to specific ones, and um, up in the range of slide 20 and ongoing, it's actually about credentials and where we come from literally and figuratively. And we specifically and intentionally didn't want to start that way as we usually do. We say, well, this is you, Martin, and this is where you come from. This is your previous experience and expertise, and these are your degrees, and they qualify you because we think it's not about that. It's actually about the proposal, the suggestion itself that then when people are getting excited as they do and saying, this is fantastic, then the, the second reaction or the other end of it, the fantasy is then saying, well, wait a minute, is this even possible? So I, we should talk a little bit more about that. You are not just a student. We're actually all students in best case of life, all, all, all lives. We should be con continuing to learn. 
but you have been, uh, which we in the academe, uh, a little bit of an odd uh, terminology or, or label is non-traditional student because <laughs> you've, you've been around and uh, explain and share a little bit uh, with us uh, since when and what you've been doing and then when we've been had this running through the slide 23 and 24 is explaining where I've been and, you know, just the last couple of days where you were broadcasting from uh, in New Orleans and um, in Detroit. But again, say where you come from. And I want to chip in already that you just didn't start. You have significant building, not just um, sort of imagining, but actually executing experience. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you again. Thank you again for inviting me here. I, I, I don't want to stop uh, uh, thanking uh, for that because it's great to, to, to be able to share some, some thoughts. I, I, I am kind of on the crossroads between academia where I have worked in, uh, in several aspects in Colombia with applied research. I, I, uh, I am more into applied research. Uh, I was teaching in Colombia, I was teaching in India, I was directing the School of Architecture of Javeriana University in Bogota. Uh, then uh, I have my studio that's still the, the project of our, our slide 23, our project that I've developed with the studio is a small practice, a uh, very hands-on. Uh, we don't to do much mu too much uh, uh, profi profit out of it, but it's a very beautiful platform to explore and to provide like, uh, 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 like arguments for the things that we talk about. And then I have been working with the city government and with Pro Bogota, who's a, an NGO uh, that, uh, that is uh, in, in aspects related to basically to territorial planning and management of urban projects, mainly in the city of Bogota, where I was born. You know? uh, so uh, I have been managing the, uh, a, a very beautiful project. This is my, the project that I feel more proud about is the first uh, funicular line of Bogota. Uh, uh, on which, apart from the funicular line, as a public transportation line, there were many, many projects along it, like uh, uh, cultural centers, uh, public facilities, parks, uh, libraries, a museum of the informal settlements, uh, and some others. No, uh, so I have been working in the, the, in those projects. Now I uh, I am uh, arriving to Hawaii. Uh, uh, and uh, this happened, no? The day that I was flying, arriving to, to Hawaii, and I was on top of Maui, the, 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 the fires were taking place. I knew the, I, I got the news uh, from people uh, writing me from Colombia. What happened? What is happening? Are you okay? Yes, yes, yes. It was in another island, no problem for, for my case, but it, yes, it is a drama. In Colombia, we're very used uh, to dramas, every kind of drama, flooding, uh, uh, fires, earthquakes, violence, poverty, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we are creative in that sense. I have been developed projects and, and probably, and uh, just getting into, into our discussion, today's discussion is uh, we have to think about creative way of, of resettling, of rebuilding. Uh, the uh, fast growing cities of the developing world are probably our biggest challenge in terms of, of, of planning in the future. And here we have a, a very dramatic situation uh, compared to other problems such as uh, tsunamis. And uh, it is, uh, there is a lot of knowledge, there is a lot of actors, there is, there is economic, there will be probably economical resources compared to other cases. So here we can be creative, we should be creative. Uh, and uh, uh, just to, to finish here, I think the, the first thing that we have to or the two first things that we have to uh, think about is first, we have to, to care about the people that is living there. No? Uh, 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 Lehaina is not a museum. Lehaina is a city, is a settlement where people live. Uh, and uh, it, it is these people that will rebuild Lehaina on a, let's say, bottom-up way. Uh, and uh, so we have to think about this vibe, this vibe no? that have to be rebuilt, that is the only way of rebuilding it is from uh, the everyday life of the people that is uh, living there, no? And the other aspect is uh, we can be creative. We should be creative, no? We cannot think about uh, rebuilding, uh, even if vernacular architecture pro uh, probably could be our inspiration. 
Uh, we should not uh, try to recreate vernacular uh, elements from Lahaina. We should not build a ultra, let's say, corporate, contemporary, artificial, uh, um, uh, Disneyfied uh, uh, city. But we have to, 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 of course, to be active, to invest, and to do it fast, of course. But uh, uh, taking care about uh, about uh, ideas and how people is really living there about. Uh, digital nomads, about tourists, uh, and of course about the, the, the settlers that still live there. No? Yeah, if we can get slide, um, because we're almost through here, 31 then uh, back when we're through, which we're almost. And I want to pick up on your not-for-profit attitude, which is, of course, important because everyone is afraid people are taking advantage of the misery of other ones. But we have been saying again that, and we read that architectural offices are donating their their service. And you know, I have I have been almost by accident invited over to uh, you know beach property, uh, you know houses of principals of large firms here. Um, and I have we have been uh, virtually uh, De Soto in Ron Lindgren's uh, house, which is very modest and moderate. So um, along these lines, I think again it's important to say um, there is um, there is there is empathy and there is an altruist uh, approach and attitude. But then you can mean well and still you know what you do is not helpful, and that's how I feel. And I use the analogy of you know skins that we're on or address code addressing code that i believe what's been done right now with these emergency shelters and we have stanley chang's newsletter that comes in at the right time it came in a little earlier here so i had a little bit more time looking at it but it feels like i'm donated winter clothes that people give that you actually don't need here all you need is umbrella uh, to, I mean, metaphorically speaking, and maybe more than metaphorically speaking, right? So, um, and I've, you know, you're, you're now they were saying, well, there's, uh, there's a lady here who has been helping the homeless, and she was saying um, her name is Cummings. I think they're Moe Cummings, and again, meaning well, and and just great empathy, and and saying, you know, I want to do more semi-permanent ones with square footages between 250 and 600 which is more than the tiny house, which is also only a hundred. For that matter, we had been throwing out a long time ago, the cargo courtyard cabanas, right? Having Metzen come back from where they moved to, they came from transportation, as you said, you came also from, and then they moved to housing with the Royal Hawaiian Museum for people coming here and visiting, uh, hospitality housing, so to speak. And then they went uh, basically, uh, uh, away from that, um, and they went, um, uh, you know, back to where they came from with shipping, but shipping containers. So we can ask them to come back to where they went to, which is to housing, and you will have the 320 inside, 320 outside. You, you, you use as many as you have, and you have a little community that basically has that. So... And they are way more human and humane as the nature of the show because you're not in a winter clothes. You're actually under an umbrella in, in a more sort of traditional, still tectonical way. But your proposal is moving above and beyond. It's still rooted. It's still literally and figuratively rooted, and it's growing out of the ground. But then um, it's making itself free and uh, in in a more... Uh, which Buckminster Fuller called it tensegrity, tensegrity way, so using tensile systems, while its foundation is still based on more a gravity system, right? So uh, people, people might, so in this discussion of, of the mindset, people might say, well, where in the world is our bedroom? Where is our three-bedroom house that we have lost? We don't see this here. This is not for us at all. This is not for us to live in. So I think we have to go back to the, I was, you know, on my way to the Holy Kolani and later I want us to talk about these here, which is my finding of the day, hi to Ron Lindgren, our mid-century modern master and a sign of hope what happens in your Holy Kolani as of this morning. Um, but uh, I also saw in the Outrigger Reef next door, I saw uh, staff hauling in a couch that came from 
somewhere else. And let us go to slide 20 for that provocation because uh, the system you used here, um, and if we go to slide 20, we, we see what's, uh, what's going on this one here. Because we had a very, very heated discussion based upon your reporting to Soto, actually, where you said, well, wood burned away and steel and, and concrete stayed. So the, the logic way would say, oh, then we go to steel and concrete. So why maybe not, guys? Let's discuss this. Yeah, I was going to say that um, there, are, there are so many considerations in this entire procedure of rebuilding, and there are just... It, it, it's endless in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of the individual uh, housing units, et cetera. Martine, I would enjoy it if you could give a very quick overview of what your proposal is, because I know it is related to trees, and I know that trees are integral to it, but I also don't know a lot of the specifics, and you're not talking about using concrete and steel. You're talking about emulating how trees grow and using that as sort of the foundation for the entire thing. And I would appreciate knowing more about what you specifically are proposing. And I chip in, as I already said, we were debating steel and concrete. And yeah. this is in flux. This is not set yeah. in stone anyways, not. Although yeah. using lava as a building material is part of this here too, of the tensegrity part. So let's Yes. I'm just saying, this is not saying this is. This is continuing to debate what could, should it be. Yes. Right, my theme? Yes. No, the, 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 again, to the same argument of things will stand if they are well built and appropriated by, by communities. So it doesn't matter if we build out of wood. If, if the building is working properly, it will be well maintained, well kept. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Martin uh, made me realize is that here in the U.S. we have a very strong culture of wood construction that we should keep, you know? uh, and also many buildings that they were built out of concrete and brick were, dis were destroyed, and we will have to rebuild them again. You know? uh, so uh, wood is a good material that could be cultivated here, so less carbon to produce it, local economies thriving, uh, and then uh, the, the 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 three structure shape. Even maybe if we go to the previous slide, nineteen and then eighteen. First nineteen. Uh, the basically the idea is simple: is to recreate the structure of what of a tree in terms of like structure, uh, 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 mm, uh, the 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 form of the uh, the structural form. Let's say uh, that have proved uh, 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 to to be very successful. No? Uh, in terms of, of how it is kept. So building trees as a macro structure that provides shelter, resiliency, and the main services, including fire resistance and fire treatment, sprinklers, and so on. No? Uh, then uh, uh, we can inhabitate those spaces in a more, let's, say, let's call it organic way. Uh, we have to, 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 to remember that the, the threat uh, of La Haina and in general, the entire world is not just fires, no? Also earthquakes and also uh, in, a, in the case of La Haina, the whole Hawaii is flooding. No? We have a big menace with flooding. So we have to think about these structures that provide resiliency uh, for people and then let the people inhabit it as they want and, and get appropriated for that. Just to finish, uh, the, the proposal, and here we can see it good, is, is to generate a second ground floor. No? So uh, in the case of a plot, just we, the, the vernacular houses in, in Colombia, in Cambodia, in, in floodable areas have two floors. The first floor is, let's call it the summer floor. And then in the flooding season, the ground floor floods, and then people goes up. So here we can think about that. And we can think about having this second floor which is a new ground floor uh, where people can cultivate, generate their food, and live in the moment of, of, of whenever they want. They can do a barbecue. They can, they, I mean, you, you have a, a garden on top of, 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 of your head. <laughs> and then uh, uh, we also, in the case of a flood or whatever, we can go up. You know? Of course, this, this mass of trees, uh, soil, and roots 
will also generate uh, thermal resistance for uh, for for heat uh, when we, when you are living downstairs. Yeah, and if we go to twenty one, and I, this gets me back to the exciting news of the Halikalani here. So this is plastic, and you, DeSoto, said, "Keep me one for my archiving," and I will. Uh, this is plastic, and I was always worried about uh, people coming, grabbing a coffee, grabbing one of these, stirring it once or twice, and throwing it away. And I said, don't you guys get it? I thought it. I should have said it. Right out there, a few feet further, the ocean, as of this morning, we have high tide, and it's really angrily, aggressively pounding against the silly attempts to keep it away. Uh, this is ending up in in that, and this is causing everything. So uh, that's the problem with steel. Steel is very highly uh, carbon embodied, and it has been mined out of the earth in other parts, not here, because we don't do this. It's on the mainland or in China predominantly, a concrete industry we have. But as of now, at least for commercial use, we have not uh, substituted the cement. So these are high carbon materials that we might think they might save us, but that's a short-minded, single-minded, kind of isolated view, right? Because in the bigger things, they fuel the problems. And, and you know, if we debate what caused it, at least we can probably agree on that the high winds, you know, fueled it. So that is one of the problems. So to sort of uh, to uh, make you feel better uh, on behalf of everyone else, because you were saying rightly so, you were like the people's, you know, eye and voice and saying, well, wood is a problem, got us in danger, was about to kill us, and the other ones maybe we could have survived, but not in the bigger in the bigger uh, thing and sense. So this is showing here too. When we have our um, uh, Boston Banish booster Metnoblet back uh, to the left is a project that Banish did out of solid timber. To the right is the solid wood school we did for the disabled children here. So, and it's it says, don't be afraid of solid timber because it is almost the opposite. It has almost nothing to do with the wood that we know and that you know was so detrimental in Lahaina because this is like matches in a matchbox. But what we're talking about is a solid trunk of a tree. And, you know, where you DeSoto also identified and said, well, that actually has in part survived the trees, you know, and even the, the banyan tree and other trees. And we keep reporting good news on that side. Right? So we are a solid timber. At the top right, you see my dear mentor, uh, Julius Natura, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago. He was uh, at the ETH in Lausanne in Switzerland, and he is the, the Pope of solid wood construction and especially side nail timber. And if we go back to 20 one more time, I also want to say hi to Christian Beck. Hi, Christian. We propose, uh, we, we promised you that we're going to propose hope uh, with your system of the, lig the Ligno Lock, which is a wooden dowel a system that through friction welding, which is basically doing this, you shoot a wooden dowel into wood and it mechanically fastens it. And I hopefully it's okay for you, Christian, to share that you come from something else that is that is less responsible with just being the monopolist in fastening with metal clamps and 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 you know like staple stapling things like pellets and stuff like that. The quickest, fastest. You know, and you started to think about the ethics behind that, both from a materialist point of view, both from a, a, a management point of view, and you felt bad, and you had um, basically um, your 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 people, and 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 Stefan Zimas, your R and D director, developed something to make up to be good, and this is the dowel. So it's it's a little bit similar to what the Hali Kalani just did, you know, these days and thinking, well, we've been doing this for the longest time, but that we cannot continue to do this. We have to we have to change and we have to do this. So I think this is a good comparison, Christian, and I'd like to have your opinion on that. We should have you on the show as well. So anyways, but this is again, sharing with you what you, Martin, have been and uh, we're three minutes away from the end of this one here. So it's already clear we have to pick up from there. But um, again, uh, in the remaining few minutes, um, I want to, again, keep the discussion going. So, um, uh, DeSoto, when you asked you, Martin, to, to explain, 
this is a different a different dwelling, right? And we should dwell on that for a little more for the remaining minutes. How is that? Why is there no where the where is the bedrooms? Why are they not there? And how do I sleep? And why is that different? Why does it have to be different? I think. Basically, because every uh, let's call it a family unit or every group of people is different. I, I mean, the idea of the four, five people, family, mom, pa, mom, mom, dad, two kids is completely vanished. No, every every group is different. Now we live, and and this will be more and more and more. No, even tourists. I was talking about tourists, digital nomads. Every household is different. Uh, there is people that will live their whole life there. There is people that will come for one week, for two days, for one month. This is good. Or uh, they come for to, to work in the summer. I mean, uh, uh, living is organic more and more. And even the more the more static uh, uh, houses uh, are changing. No. So if we face that and we provide uh, uh, a structure that can be uh, and receive. Uh, different groups, as as we see in the image, no, uh, one single person, two people, three people, twenty people, <laughs> no, in a in a more uh, uh, communitarian uh, way of living, uh, we will be we will be uh, 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 like able to attend every 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 different every different person, no, every exactly. different project. Be because the the number of three three bedrooms, uh, Stanley's newsletter was also reiterating what we have been throwing in last week into your required requested slide with the Ulu trees at the Soto, the $3,000 for a studio that some people offer as the profit from that one, right? So the three bedrooms and the three thousands, you know, they are a problem. Do we want to return to that? And you say no. And so you're also thinking about the construction process, the construction management as a participatory process that you know with steel we actually not only import the material that is very carbon loaded but we also import the labor which puts out of our people out of labor and with concrete we also have an industry so it's actually not us taking care of us we have to outsource so cutting out these middlemen you know is is another aspect of basically um you know returning to actually something that many of the working class people never had is to a more free life. And on that note, we're at the end of these exciting 28 minutes to pick up from here again uh, next week with the three of us. So please join us again. And until then, please stay very empathically, fantastic, fantastically empathic. Bye-bye. <laughs>